Okay, so I am back live as Three Sisters. It doesn't allow me to come as myself, Samuel Carolina. So let's see if this time we get. We get Annie. if we can so sorry and thank you for your patience everyone <laughs> let me see uh, Annie now you might be able to join us <laughs> and Jen to share the pictures with us maybe you can be as yourself on the page just as a viewer of our conversation and maybe share as yourself. Let's see if Annie, can you see me now? Okay, so do you want to know the cause of this what? for all of you future people who are going to be challenged technologically? <laughs> the iPad was simply turned the wrong way. It was horizontal, but it was just turned the other way. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for your patience. Oh, my goodness. It's okay. <laughs> Thank you for everyone's patience. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, because uh, I guess I know I'm not the only one who's technically challenged in this no. life. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> but this, this, this is the courage it takes, right? It's like, okay, we practice everything. We prepare as much as possible. <laughs> and when the time of shining is here, boom. <laughs> Are you really, really, really ready for this? <laughs> I, I have to be at this point. Yes. My God. Oh, my goodness. Oh, wow. Okay. So here we are. Thank You're you so Spain. much. You're in Spain. I'm in Housatonic, Massachusetts. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Wonderful. So, Annie, I want to share what you shared with us. Um, so everyone okay. now joining in this conversation knows you, okay? So, Annie, you have a polyamorous relationship with choreography, generally design, writing, and activism. In 2012, you established your voice as a distinctive international generally designer with the launch of the Annie Maliki Signature Collection. And in October 2017, you... Uh, or your company joined Three Sisters as a water carrier. And so far, mm -hmm. this December, you would have planted 4,000 trees, right? Through your business and through yes. the beauty you create for this world. Yes, 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 yes. So, what would you yes. share so, with us? Uh, what, what brought you to Three Sisters? In the first place? Uh, well, I think. Um, it, a combination of be, I was ready. I think I was ready for the message that Tree Sisters mm -hmm. had to offer on inner and outer work. Um, I've been reflecting on this question, you know, since you asked me to do this interview. And, you know, I realized that, like, I think so many of us who have joined Tree Sisters, as a child, I, I think there was a huge amount of suffering um, just because of being sensitive and sensitive to what's happening 
And the pain of that, the, the layers of the sort of the shadow of the patriarchy being on a, on a girl, a young girl, um, and the dominance over nature was so painful. And I think, um, like Charles Eisenstein says, you know, you, you bury it, you cope, you move forward. And I think that it came a moment a few years ago when I, I was really feeling the agony after the election and everything. And I, um, I, that's when Teresa just came into my life. And I really felt that it, it helped me um, heal some of that because it's a forum. It's a forum through which to feel supported, to which, through which to feel you can actively make a change. And on the inner, on the inner plane, I think one of the five tenets of Tree Sisters is the courage to shine, right? And the um, courage to shine through your own gifts. And that is something that I had not given myself true permission to do beforehand. Um, it's been there. I've always been artistic and I've always, I mean, maybe I might not be perceived that way by my friends, but I didn't feel empowered to express my activism through my particular gifts because I didn't really see the relationship between artistry and environmentalism. I, I couldn't find that path. So when I discovered Tree Sisters, I am a dancer and I listened and watched Claire's 10 first YouTube videos that she made. And she was still very raw and, she, and being online, she was very, it was very, um, had a real edge to it. And I was so moved by them that I decided to create a dance using the soundtrack of those videos. I asked her for permission and I transcribed them and I selected out parts of her voice and her narrative mm. to make a soundtrack for a dance that I then choreographed with mm. five dancers, all beautiful, accomplished local dancers here in the Berkshires. Mm. And I separated it into sections. Um, I think that there's going to be a link that's going to be posted in the feed here and also a yes. photograph of the dancers in the Grove. So this coincided with establishing a Berkshire Grove and we have a lovely group of women here and we're, we're doing all kinds of things, but um, it started with the launch of the Grove at Edith Wharton's house in Lenox, which she's a wonderful writer. So she is in a state, she's no longer alive. Um, and, but she has this beautiful estate. So we had the launch of this Grove and we performed the dance in her, in the, in the grove on her property and amidst the trees so there were five dancers there were five choices there were five trees and um if you'd like to watch you can so we used claire's voice and worked with the trees we we danced literally amidst the trees and i designed the costumes um i i spent all summer sewing it's it was there's no um, monetary reasons for any of this, but it was as if, you know, she said, Claire said, um, courage to use your gifts. And I'm a creative and I'm a, I love to dance and I love to write and I love to design jewelry. And so it was an outlet for me to engage myself, engage my community, plant, you know, work towards activism, planting trees, engage with tree sisters all bundled into one so it was a really satisfying and mm. um a wonderful wonderful way to kind of get my sink my teeth into the message of what tree sisters is and, and the message which is so layered mm. so many layers from yeah. outer to inner mm -hmm. yes mm, beautiful mm -hmm. thank you for sharing yeah. that jen maybe if you manage to share in the comments the video um some of the pictures of the dance and the dancers maybe now is a good moment to share i don't know i know you are having technical challenges as well jen so <laughs> yeah, we know about this would be a nice moment to illustrate what um annie is sharing with us but annie how um so what what do you 
you know it's very important i think what you what you what you share i mean i i totally relate myself as well as a creative and um having this pain you know to move in life surviving and not you know paying attention yeah. to everything that we're capable of feeling and coming to a point in our lives where that feeling the pain is our actually power to um, to create yeah. and, to, and to bring a message of change yes. and hope and transformation into the world. But what would you say is the main inner block that, um, you know, encountering Three Sisters uh, help you to, to dissolve so you could fulfill this soul calling to express and to, and to feel that you're making a difference through your creativity? What, would, what was at that time that inner block or inner inner place that needed you know to to be expressed i love that that's a really good question and i i think it's a good question to be discussing on the tree sisters page actually for all of us i, mean, I know we are but all of us yeah um i don't think it's done i think it's happening every day <laughs> that block is still very active um you know it's a challenge all the time and I think, uh, I think there was a disconnect for me f between my natural gifts and my concern for the environment. Mm. I couldn't see how to integrate them. Mm. I couldn't see how to integrate my practical life, my work, my business, my passions with really making a difference mm. environmentally. And Somehow Treesis is just this miraculous vehicle. It's, mm. it's worked with my business and it's worked with my personal life. Um, mm. And I've been developing relationships and now I've met you in Spain. And, you know, it's just sort of has this lovely ripple effect. Um, so the block so, uh, is also... Mm. Yeah, go ahead. No, 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 go, go. Well, I was going to say the block is also comparing. There's a comparing mm. mind um, and somehow feeling sort of a judging mind that is judging, okay, is what I'm doing really impacting? So mm. there's a, a diminishing um, thought process mm. that we do very well as women. Um, yeah. Would and we, be making we, sense we evaluate. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And also, we are so co-opted by this capitalist system that it is very difficult, as Tree Sisters is experiencing right now, um, it is very difficult to be engaged in any way monetarily with this world mm -hmm. and not do damage. Mm -hmm. So how to neutralize that? You know, they say carbon neutral. Well, what about activism business neutral? You know, it's not simple. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, it's not black and so, white. Yes. Yeah. No, it's so complex, you know, and what you think is beneficial to the planet may not be. Mm -hmm. um, which, so I think for me, um, uh, some of it has been a really learn just knowing myself. In mm -hmm. the end, it's like, who are you? Are you, mm -hmm. you, you going to be on the front lines leading throngs of people in protest or are you going to be quietly choreographing a dance and is one more powerful than the other? Mm. Are you going to be you know, quietly choreographing jewelry that makes a woman feel beautiful? Mm. So what's, where's the value system here and where's the dualistic thinking that we do so um, automatically mm. is so damaging you know, to the shining that we, that we need yeah. to have. So, so I think, yeah, Tree Sisters has definitely, um, you know, helped me work through the nuance mm. and sort of understand that this is multi-layered and that we're all human and we're just trying, you know, we're just doing our damn best, you know, it's not that easy. It's not that easy, so, yeah. yeah. And everything counts, and our like, like every action counts from recycling to educating your kids to <laughs> creating choreographies or exactly leading a whole movement yeah everything mm. Mm -hmm. interesting our unique. yeah so mm -hmm. exactly yeah so for me it's 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 
questioning what are my capacities as well, because sometimes we just push ourselves so hard. Yeah. And we go beyond what we're really, um, it's not really offering our gifts at that point. Mm. It's pushing past our gifts. Yeah, so also part of our mm, gifts right now have, have a place and a time and an expression that it might grow into the future. But sometimes we think that we need to start with already being in that full expression of our gift yeah. instead of starting here now and letting the gift <laughs> move us. No? Evolve. Move yeah, us. Evolve. Yes. It's that whole thing of sort of being breathed versus breathing in breath, out breath. And mm -hmm. Hmm. yeah, that's right. And I, love, and, I, also, um, I also want to, to name what, what you share, you know, is this what I love uh, in the inner journey process, the, the embodiment part, which I'm a huge fan of this embodiment work, right? Yeah. Um, but really, once we have that dream uh, or gift to really bring, expand our capacity to feel and to act and to create and to behave in the world as that mm -hmm. gift, right? Really embodying the difference that we want to yes. be, see and contribute with. And you know, the body is a limited, we're, we're a physical being, we have limits, we, we're not robots. Mm -hmm. So part of that embodying is to understand the limits. It's like understanding the limits of the planet. So yeah, so I, I'd like to talk a little bit about my business here, because um, yes. I've been thinking about, you know, how's Tree Sisters impact in my business? Or how has it, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, there's something I call the ecology of our business or of a business, mm -hmm. which is a, it's a sort of understanding an ecosystem of a business, which starts with understanding what you have to offer in the business and what your limits are. Mm -hmm. And then how far can you push them and how beneficial is it to push them far? Mm. So my, I, I have a small business. I'm a jewelry designer and I work with my husband and I have a bookkeeper, a business coach and a, an employee who comes once a week. We're tiny. Mm -hmm. And, um, and we have consciously decided to stay small. Mm -hmm. It's the pressure to grow is just so huge, mm -hmm. you know, to, to grow and expand and make more profit and do more. Than that. Mm -hmm. And we've really consciously held ourselves held back because we want small scale production. Mm -hmm. We want hand, everything to be handmade. Mm -hmm. We want relationships with our customers. We want relationships with our children. We want to have time for our children, mm. for each other. Mm. We want to plant a garden in the summertime. Mm. We want to be able to travel a little bit. Mm. I, I'm also very involved in my community um, doing an anti-plastics. We just, I'm in, on an environmental committee and we just got plastic bottles banned in our town. The sale of single use plastic bottles banned. Mm. So. So in order to have time to do these things that matter to me, it, it's scaling back, not, not pushing forward. And how to do that wisely and how to do that strategically so that the business still thrives. And so you still, you're still growing, but you're growing within a container. Mm. And so Tree Sisters has that message as well. And I know yeah. that Tree Sisters is grappling with that as well how fast to grow, how much yeah. to grow, how to grow, you know, look at what's happening, you know, so um, this is part of the ecology within an organization or within a business or with a family to mm -hmm. understand that, that the health of an ecosystem, even if it's a human eco ecosystem. So that's, that's also been an impact of Tree Sisters yeah, beautiful. for me. Mm. Yeah, what's come to me yeah. is also in this ecosystem, there are seasons as well, right? So there is the in-breath and the out-breath yes. through the yeah. cycles of the business and how we yes. work around the business. Yeah, And I think if we can be sustainable in our businesses and in our lives, the whole world becomes, uh, you know, that, that's, the con that's the embodiment of the consciousness of sustainability, right? It's like, okay. Who am I being yes. and what I'm doing in the world in a sustainable way? Yes. Of course it will impact everything, right? 
Yes. Mm. And it takes us, it takes a lot of self inquiry because we're not all the same. No. You know, no. what, no. what, what your, what's lim where I find my limits is different than where you find your limits. Yeah. So you might have a capacity for being out in the world and engaged that's greater than mine. Mm. And bravo, here, here. So I go for it, sister. You know, that's, um, that's part of getting out of the comparing mind because I think for a lot of my life, um, I grew up in a very artistic family with um, a very interesting dynamic, a lot of poets and musicians and people coming through the house. And my dad was, was a performer and my mom's an artist. And so there was always sort of this ethos of, of having this interesting life. Mm. And so I've had to kind of, examine that because I have a very interesting life, but that doesn't mean that it's that I'm in magazines or on television or something, you know, I'm here with you. This is already such an honor. Thank you. You know, but it's not, uh, it's, it's not glamor and glitz. And I've had to, that's been my own sort of uh, narrative from my childhood. Everybody has their childhood narrative. But my childhood, it, you know, that's a value system of, um, it's just, and my parents are capable, were capable of that kind of largesse, grandeur. And I'm not quite as capable of that. And that's fine. I need a quieter space. So it's like this whole process of every day, you're kind of looking at yourself and looking at your limits and what do you want to contribute and really kind of the sobriety of shining. It's a, it's a kind of a oxymoron or co it seems apparently like a comp co uh, contradiction, but to shine truly is a sober. Yeah. It's a sober act, isn't it? Because you're really having to be very conscious. Well, I think and what slow you're down saying, and step back. Yeah, it's it's embodying our our values. What's important for me? It's it it's, might look absolutely different than. Yeah, practice, that's right. right. And that's that's also the training from patriarchy. Yes, as daughters, we have learned, right, that success right. is in a certain way and looks in a certain way. So we compare ourselves, right? Um, a business has to be in a certain way, and you absolutely need a personal yes. assistance every day. And you, they, we have to do and be in a certain way while unlearning yeah. all that to restore our own life force. So we restore the life force of our planet, right? That's where the message of... And our children like, and our friends. Exactly, yes. right? Our so community, our, our immediate... Mm -hmm. Yes. And sort of, yes, exactly. Surpassing that message of having to... <laughs> having to create some giant stamp as your legacy on the earth. No, mm -hmm. your legacy is your, your self knowing and your being in harmony with your life, mm -hmm. you know, in some kind of harmony with your life. Totally. And that's hard. It's hard. <laughs> well, it requires it's, it's a work. Lot of sense. This is what I, I feel, right? It, re it really yes. requires, as you said, self inquiry, which is one of the practices that is not very, practice i feel right because it takes sitting with ourselves and saying hmm, and letting go of the judgment and being very aware of like is this my voice or someone else's voice right like yes that's right through that path every day yeah i totally relate to that <laughs> i also think it's about it's about redefining terms mm -hmm. so you have a term like success mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what does that mean you have a term like beauty that's been interesting for me because I design jewelry, right? So you have, so beauty, what is beauty? Oh, I wanted to read a quote. Um, yes, I wanted to ask you I about think... beauty because um, I'm also a big, big fan of beauty. And um, yeah, why beauty is so important for you? I wanted to ask you this. Why beauty? Why well, there's do you this think beauty is important right now? <laughs> mm. There's a John O'Donohue quote that I just was hearing him the other day. Here's the thing about beauty. Even in the landscapes of control and denigration, you can just be swept off your feet by beauty. It's like, so <laughs> very moving to me. Um, 
you know, beauty, beauty is, for, it's been the really interesting because I design jewelry and jewelry is superficial. It's, it's something you put on. It's a piece, it's an object. It's a material thing. It's not, um, so what is, it? so I, I, I don't really look at the magazines. I'm not aspiring to be in them. So I've been thinking, how do I, where is my origin of my creative energy around beauty? So when I'm designing, I can feel when I'm in that process. I can feel when I'm in, in the beauty of the creative moment. And I, I have a certain eye that I, of something I find beautiful, and it does resonate with my customers. Like I have found this beautiful relationship, and it's all nature-inspired. So it's all coming from the forms, the shapes, the patterns I see in shells on leaves, in the water, the ripples on the water, sand, you see a snow, shadows, you know. Um, so I'm constantly looking for beauty in the natural world, and that is what's informing my work. And that is, and I also have built my collections in my business around celestial seascape, dune, rainforest, river, and I'm just launching a glacier collection. Mm-hmm. So, so these natural themes are what sort of inform inform my understanding of beauty and it's transcends so in terms of going back to the beginning of our conversation where we were talking about the pain you know the the suffering and the pain well I do believe and I know it to be true that beauty cuts through some of that it lifts the spirit it is a spiritual act to 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 find beauty whatever it is that you feel is beauty and it's not a quest for impressing somebody or it's, it's something that transcends that. Mm. But, you know, again, it's, it's this um, patriarchal messaging around beauty is so layered and complicated. I did an interview with Claire and it was so fascinating to me that she, oh, I don't want to say too much, but she, obviously we all know she is beautiful, like how beautiful. But she, ne- she didn't have a relationship with jewelry as something that could make her feel beautiful. For her, actually, it was the opposite. She didn't need jewelry. And last time I saw her, she said that she's really working on that and that she's coming through that. And she sees these goddesses who wear these, you know, tribal women and just beautiful modern women who adorn themselves with jewelry as a real celebration of their goddess self, their their full empowered self. It's so different than like the Tiffany or the Cartier, you know, it's like, it's a very different understanding. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, so it's, so I was really, you know, there is a woman like Claire, oh my God, you know, we all, I, I've met her now and I see her, the human, the lovely, wonderful, warm, gentle human being that she is, you know, but she's quite a force. So to hear her sort of express that vulnerability around jewelry was so surprising to me. I just, wow, really? (laughs) Um, And it just, again, it's like coming home to our own relationship, to our past, to our suffering, to, you know, for her, she, she shared with me that she, to, to really adorn herself was hard, is hard for her. And um, so, and it was just so interesting to, so you go past the comparing mind and you say, oh, right, there's a woman, I'm a woman, you're a woman, we're just, we're just human beings who are, you know, flawed and struggling and trying yeah, to find our way and with our own gifts so i think yes. it's coming to yes. recognize yes. well that gift and giving ourselves permission to shine again and unlearning the the wound of patriarchy around beauty i mean yeah God. i learned that being so... a model when i was uh, in in argentina yes when i was a teenager just before my anorexia and uh, you know being being inside of the fashion industry as a model and also daughters to architects and being a designer myself. Beauty was everywhere in my childhood and in my early years. But it was a beaut- 
tea that was manufactured because fashion, you know, modeling is all manufactured and you have to look in a certain way. So, so your image, you know, fits in with whatever message or the yes. expectations of whatever brand, right? Uh, and of course, I was never enough, so therefore the anorexia, right? And, and, and all my journey out of that to come out to terms of, but hold on a minute, here the greatest creator is nature. And everywhere you go in the world, is, there is beauty. And uh, until I came mm. back very recently to peace with my body and to see my body now at 43, beautiful, right? Mm. And understanding that clothing and accessories and or makeup or hairstyle or whatever, right, is the expression of our gift. So how can beauty lead us into truth and healing yes. and the expression of the essence of our soul? So we shine our yeah. uniqueness and by sh shining our uniqueness, I give permission to other people, men, women, children, and everyone in between to China isn't well, it isn't it back. interesting you know for me yeah. this is yeah. when, when i read your your um, your, um uh, and about beauty what you wanted to share is for me beauty is an invitation to the courage to relax you know and be for me beauty is an invitation <sighs> to right. be yeah isn't that and interesting cultivating the quality of being can be challenging but look at nature she is just is not yes doing and anything specific right <laughs> well except that don't forget she needs watering she needs sun she needs self-care yeah. so it's like that yeah. balance between relaxing and then also how do you feed yourself how do you nourish, nourish. yourself yeah. mm -hmm. you know because there's there's also a, there can be i think a danger in sort of letting letting yourself go that horrible phrase but you know um, in in re reacting against the beauty paradigm, we can go the opposite way. Oh yeah, and yeah. just say, just like I don't care how I look, I I'm not going to go get yeah, and and sort of forget our ourselves. Yes, so that's yeah. finding the femininity of um, self care. Or I don't know if that's the femininity, but somehow the finding your finding your self care as a part of your as a part of your embodiment of your own beauty. I guess is the yeah, and, and look, I, I see it also as the carrier of our gifts. So we deserve our own attention. If I am going to honor my gifts and my creativities. For yes. example, for you, how do you honor yes. it? How do you give yourself time to get inspired? Do you meditate? Do you go into nature? And how, what, what is the practice for you of self-care? I'm just not curious. <laughs> well, I do. I'm, I'm right now, I do a lot of yoga. And okay. so I'm ha I've, fi I've finally gotten a morning practice, which I've mm -hmm. struggled to do all my life. And who knows how long it will last. You know, I don't want to curse it by putting a big heavy gavel over it. But, you know, I wake up and I do uh, some and I have the time because my children have left the nest. Mm -hmm. So that's huge. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I also have compassion for those years when I couldn't do it because they are, their needs superseded mine. Um, but now they, they're gone and I wake up and I, because I have, I have my own business, I can schedule my own time and I do a morning practice. Sometimes it's five minutes, sometimes it's 10 minutes, sometimes it's three minutes, but I do it every day. I'm trying. <laughs> um, and then I do spend time outside. I go, I love to garden and I, and I spend time on a lake in the summer and, and I walk in the woods and I ground myself that way. And I really love that. And then I also f photograph, you know, jewelry. Um, mm. Maybe, I don't know if Jen wants to share the picture of the leaf earrings, but. Yeah, um, I would love to see some of uh, your jewelry, Jen, if you are able to. Pose. Yes. So it's yeah. not. My jewel in this in this particular photograph, it is an actual leaf. But a lot of times, it's more inspired by the forms in in nature. Mm. So I do spend a lot of time looking at nature in that way. Mm. Um, 
And then music, of course, and poetry, and actually not so much poetry. I say that as if, because everybody says poetry. I don't actually love poetry. <laughs> I do like poetry, but it's not my, I'm pulled more towards literature. I love fiction, really good writing, music for certain, for sure. Um, how about you? What do you? Well, I also have my morning practice. Um, uh -huh a body work technique or dance or just mm -hmm. um, meditating. So staying in bed <laughs> longer if I need to. Meditating, I love that. <laughs> give myself permission. <laughs> and then nature for sure. And a lot of silence. My really, silence. my self-care is silence. I spend a lot of solo time, really. Wow, isn't that what beautiful? Yeah. Whatever that is, yes. or walking or, yeah, just... You know, my father, he died of cancer, actually, and he was a musician. And as I said, he was a very external person. But as he was dying, we all thought he would want to listen to music more because that was his passion in life. And as he was dying, he said, no, no, he wanted silence. He just wanted silence. And I, as I get older, I understand that now because in silence, you go more into the universality of the divine oneness when you're in silence. You can, you can get past the, the monkey mind and all the brain machinations for that. Mm. Yeah. yeah. It's a beautiful medicine for me, yeah. Yeah, yeah nice, mm. yeah. So um, do you have some creative ideas for Tracy <laughs> that you are working on right now? Oh, wow. Um, for the future that you would like to create, accomplish? I mean, you know, I really respect that Tree Sisters, yeah, I, I actually have done custom designs for nonprofits and, um, and I love to do that. And I brought that up with Tree Sisters, but I respected the fact that Tree Sisters said, actually, no, we're not necessarily, we don't want to get into a lot of product. Um, mm. And I thought, okay, I get it. That, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if, if, if it will change. Um, I did give Claire this beautiful leaf necklace, and maybe that could be posted too, um, that so suits her. And it's, it's just a simple silver sort of undulating leaf, and it's got oxidized veins like a real leaf. Um, and I also sell for every piece that I sell, three trees are planted. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I have a little uh, card that I put in with every order that says that. Um, and hopefully that's drawing people to Tree Sisters also to become donator, donors mm -hmm. and active in the uh, Women's Seeding Change website. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of ambitions for Tree Sisters, I, I'm just going to let it unfold. I don't know. I don't know. Um, what, what will be beneficial for me, what will be beneficial for Tree Sisters. I did, um, I did, was involved in getting a grant for Tree Sisters, which was last year mm. through uh, an extended family foundation. And that was very rewarding. It was about, I don't know, $15,000 that uh, I was able to help get. And so that was, mm. but that wasn't through the business, but that was really satisfying. Mm. So, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I haven't, uh, again, it's, it's that thing of, I don't want to force anything. Mm -hmm. So if something arises, that's, that's a good collaboration. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, I feel like that the beauty also in doing this grant is that I got a better understanding of the inner circle, the core team that Tree Sisters has. Mm -hmm. And I know it's constantly shifting and evolving. And so already in a year, a lot, probably a lot has changed. But the, um, the work that's being done internally within the organization is like a blueprint for the messaging that's going out. So uh, that, and it's very difficult, important interpersonal work mm -hmm. between the women who are navigating such a big load because it's not like it's, it's not like all of you are making a lot of money in there. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. It's uh, operating, you know, on a very low budget. So um, I guess my respect for the organization is really, really high. And um, 
because how many organizations really have that kind of integrity that runs right to the center? That's not been co-opted by the patriarchy in that sense. Like it's, it's not diseased on the inside, but pretty on the outside. Mm -hmm. do you, yeah, I love do you know this. what I'm saying? You are not the first three sisters in our conversations to name this. You know, it's like there are yes. so many options that we are invited to give back. And how do we mm. know where to put our effort, our creativity, our time? Our money, you know, just for me as well, you know, coming up with the idea of the greatest conversation is because I know, you know, I, I know the women in the organization yeah. personally and I know, you know, how they work. Yeah. Um, but it's difficult to discern, right? Right now on our, on our planet, where to go. It's very difficult. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you go too far. And, and uh, yeah. I, I, maybe we should just quickly talk about that. Um, not about what's happening in Tree Sisters this week, but more like you and I were emailing a bit because, um, for example, with our business, we have 40% of our jewelry is recycled. Mm. And um, we're proud of this, but it's not enough in my mind. I would love to be 100%, mm. you know, in terms of the, because it is a metal and it is extracted from the earth. Yeah. But it, again, it comes around to this messy, sort of necessarily messy set of choices that we have when we're engaged in the real world. Mm. I mean, it's fine if, you, if, you, if you're independently wealthy. Well, if you're independently wealthy, then you have to ask, where is all that money coming from? Because most likely it's coming from somewhere not so good, right? <laughs> so no matter how you slice it, you know, we are all in the... the, the we are all violating our values. Yeah, all there of is us a degree of compromising, are, right? I think. Uh, I guess that's. The, it feels like a violation, but I, I think it's a conversation we have to have with each other so that it doesn't lead to more duality. Exactly. So that we don't. So that we don't sort of say, sort of finger point and say, "Oh, you sinner! You know, you've everything I care about, and you're betraying." I've had to do that with myself with our business because yes. it's just, we can't essentially economically, if we were to go 100% recycled silver, it's more expensive. It's like, how do we stay afloat as a small business? Mm -hmm. How do we do that? Yeah. So we have to make choices and we have to look at not only the environment, but the social aspects of mm -hmm. our business, you know, and how we're treating our customers and how we're not a big box store and how we're, we sell at crafts fairs. It's a dying thing, a craft fair, but it's a beautiful thing because it supports artisans and, and people who are making their own pottery and making their own weavings and creating their own woodwork. And it's, uh, these, are, these are exquisite art forms that we want to maintain. So I don't know. It's just there's no, there's no moral high ground. That's no, I point. think it's, it's what we were talking just before, right, as well. It's like, okay, what are yeah. my limits? What I am able to, you know, or ready to compromise? How much, you know? Yes. Um, how do I stay, stay as aligned as possible? And as a doer, as a creator, you know, we are in the, in the most difficult position because being the one that points and, you know, and... <laughs> and shows how guilty you are on like that's the easy position right but being trying to figure out how to do business in a new way um it's difficult it's difficult very difficult and um and, and i as i was sharing with you yes in the with i'm working with vegan silk in 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 india and we changed pro, uh, we changed suppliers already because the first one couldn't certify it that it was 100 percent vegan so now we have and before launching already my project, right, I have people asking me all sort of questions, trying to see where I am, you know, failing of being 100% ethical and, you know, unsustainable. I was like, yeah, well, of course, I, I am shipping by FedEx, but, you know, okay, that's, I need to compromise that part. But all the rest, you know, in India, it's being done in a certain way. And I'm, I'm having partners that are amazing. You know, it's like, and I am making sure certain things, and of course, it's not going to be the cheapest, but um, the cheapest product, but because I don't want the cheapest product. I want something, right. you know, the yes. communities and the women and the men yes. also, and the printer work with certain inks. So I, I won't uh -huh. compromise, 
So don't ask me that my product is 60 because it will not cost six or it will not be selling at 60. Yes, right. Or that you have any other, you know. Product. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's not that's not why I'm choosing India on the first place neither, right? So and just now for example here I am leading a workshop with women with a JDEC practice and jade of course we are where it comes from yeah. Yeah, from the earth. Yeah. So I think, and, and the JDEC practice uh, will ask us to use um, 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 what the um, dental floss, okay? Uh -huh. So I know dental floss is for the animals in the water. It's, it's just a very bad thing, like really a bad thing. And Jade, well, maybe I need to change this practice because I, I'm not willing to contribute this. I can make right. money because, you know, everyone is talking about genetic practices. So it can be very easy for me. But I'm asking myself the question, the difficult question. Do I really want to do this? Yes. Or should we create something new that is more sustainable? And, and the question is, how do you ask yourself the, that question? And how do you pursue the answer without diminishing your shine, without diminishing your joy exactly. and your spirit as you're going through it? Exactly. that... It's, it's very hard. There, there are moments when it's like, oh, God, really? You know, <laughs> it's I know, so discouraging. This, this can be our excuse, if you will, for not shining, for not sharing our medicine or our gifts. Yes. Because, oh, no, I cannot be blah, blah. Okay, so I will not do it, right? But I do believe that when we ask ourselves these questions, then, you know, now that I have it in my mind for over a month or something, I just... You know, I just keep bouncing into, <laughs> okay, Samuel, you will need to find the answer to this. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I just can't escape anymore now. You know, yes, when you're aware yes. of something, it's like, wow, do I really want to contribute this way or not? But I do believe that this leads to innovation, right? As, as we know. So if we want, are going to innovate for, you know, on behalf of all life, Okay, but, but so for some people, me thinking about the fish, uh, you know, that is going to get entangled in the dental floss that my <laughs> clients throw, it, it might be crazy, but I just well, can't like, get, get it out of my mind now, right? Right. Well, it can be paralyzing. It can exactly. be. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you might have to find some kind of, uh, I don't know, twine from, vine from the forest or something. <laughs> It's, it is compromise and it is adjustment. I mean, you know, for us, like we ship all of our packaging is this, we, I try to do all recycled and I, you know, very minimal packaging and, and very personalized packaging. And, you know, we, and then you go into a hospital and then you see the amount of waste that's going into the, I mean, it's like the contradictions are so glaring and it's very hard to, Again, it's like how to find that balance and find some kind of harmony and peace in your life, despite all the damage and ills and problems and, and things that, you're, that we are so educated to. And, and because we have this sense that we're, because we're tree sisters, you know, we care so much, you know. So I think a lot of support is needed. A lot more support than criticism is needed. Absolutely. Constructive support. I mean, don't just say, oh, ideas, oh yeah. go girl. No, you say, look, how about, have you tried this? And what about that? And, mm. you know, mm. creative, out of the box thinking is, mm -hmm. is really, and, and maybe when you don't know, you pull back. That's what I've learned. When I don't know, okay, I don't react right away. I don't, okay, this is a problem. I'm going to wait for a minute. I'm going to investigate. I'm going to do some research. I'm going to talk to some people. I'm not going to kill myself over this. <laughs> and then the answer sometimes emerges by itself. That's mm. this organic process that if, you, if you're too much on the rat race and in, on that treadmill of success and going after things, you don't have time for gestation. You don't have time for things to work themselves in your body and your system and your creative self. So I love our business. I just love it because it's, it's our business. It's the way we want to make it. We're not being told and instructed and commanded. 
but it's big responsibility, mm. you know, when you, yeah. when you run, when you run your own life, it's not everybody's, Oh, I wish I had my own business. Well, it comes with its own package and you have to sort of accept the whole thing. Yeah. And yeah, it's not for everybody. Mm. Yeah. 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 I think most, most people want, you know, most of us want uh, freedom, but freedom comes with responsibility. Right. And I think the yes. freedom of, that is sustainable, that is, you know, grounded yeah. or rooted in my own values, my vision for myself. How do I want to see, do I want to garden? Do I want to cook for my kids? Do, like, all that to be that gives you freedom but we need to choose that yes so, we need to choose and that responsible and, for this and it's we're talking as if you know a lot of a lot of people don't have these choices they don't yes. economically it's not yeah. possible and yeah. it's all lovely to say these things but then yeah. you know if you're stuck with huge student debt and a lot a big mortgage and a, a job you can't that you hate that you can't give up i mean you know, I, I can hear that voice too. Like, okay, yeah. you tree sisters, you know, you go on, you, you know, you white women. <laughs> so it's, um, I, I'm, I think compassion is also just, uh, I don't know. It's all, it's all about not, not being too judgmental really Absolutely. of ourselves and others. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So how would you, what would you be your last or your invitation or last message for women who are considering to join Three Sisters as a donator or as a water carrier in their business? What would it be your invite, your last uh, invitation for them, your last message? Well, I would say what I've learned is that I started out with a bit of an agenda. Honestly, mm -hmm. I was hoping to get something back like more like I'll give you this and you give me this you know more um I'll I'll donate and you'll advertise that kind of recipe <laughs> which is very you know it's very much the capitalist model um and I've softened around that because what I've and also Teresa has taught me has taught me that by setting boundaries with me um at the beginning, when I wanted to be a water carrier, I asked for certain things and we had a dialogue. It wasn't just no. It was like, well, how about this? You give this, you know, it was more of a negotiation. And, um, and I think, like, I never expected to be asked to have this conversation, for example. So thank you. <laughs> you know, and so I think lowering your expectations and trusting that as an as an organism, Tree Sisters is evolving and changing and exploring and expanding and contracting, breathing in, breathing out. And you, when you become one, you become a part of that system. And so if your business is aligned as a water carrier, you know, you're going to, you're going to benefit, but you have to just trust that, mm. trust that you're going to benefit. Mm. And I basically just believe in the organization. I trust the organization. And I, I know that that trust is what's so valuable and that what Claire is struggling, what you're all struggling with, with this Unilever thing is that trust is really so important. It's at the core. Mm. So I'm watching interestedly. I mean, I'm definitely in, but I, I'm watching how this is being managed. I'm observing, I'm supporting, but not like blindly. I'm, I want to see how every, every organization, every business is prone to darkness. Mm. It's the nature. We're all as people. So we have to choose every day, every mm. minute. Mm -hmm. And Tree Sisters has to choose every day, every minute. And mm. that's so I, as, as, a, as a donator, uh, personal, because I donate every month from my, my, my own account. And as a water carrier, I'm watching you know, and I'll watch, I'll see how it goes. But I guess that would be, mm. I don't know. I think that's what I would say. Yeah, mm. it's been nice. It's been really lovely. I, mm. I've enjoyed Beautiful. it so Thank much. Thank you. I think it's very important what you share and takes a lot of courage to, to be this sincere. You know, we, we are taught as daughters of patriarchy that we need to have our agenda. We need to know what we get when we give something yes this is how yes we, i mean i've been coached to 
be this way. <laughs> you know, my yes, I we have telling me to do this. And I was like, yeah, no, you know, I, I just don't want. I I knew deep inside that it was in a misalignment, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. But, but voicing this in the way that you share, you know, I mean, and especially, you know, when we are speaking about businesses, uh, we are taught to be strategic and, you know, know why we are doing what we are doing. Yeah. Uh, care and just, care yeah. is something that is quite lost, I think, in, the few, in, in, in our world. You know, genuinely care, genuinely giving without expecting something back, knowing from a higher perspective that the universe will re rearrange everything, you know. Yes, there is a, there is that's a right. There's a quote that I love that says, life will take away from those who have taken. <laughs> yes, that's right, isn't it? Yes, it's the law. It's like a physics. It's a law. Yeah, <laughs> it <I> is. <laughs> yes, we have all seen that. And, and it's, so it's, it's a staying present and not and and being awake you know taking off the blinders mm. you know as the pain that we're all dealing with which continues um can make us very myopic mm. it can make us say okay tree sisters is good i'm gonna put all my eggs in that basket i mm. love them they're perfect you know <laughs> idealize you know create mm. this well i actually don't think that's any better than you know, investing all your money in Exxon. Mm -hmm. so, so there's some kind of awakeness, awareness yes, that you have to present. do to, to be present. And, um, and, and the, the constant dialoguing that, that Tree Sisters is having through the forum of the Facebook page and, and the courses and these conversations. And that, that, is, that to me is the meat of the organization. I know the money going out to these trees is good. But you know what? Arbor Day is doing that. All these Amazon programs, a lot of, a lot of organizations are doing that. So that's good and necessary and wonderful and perfect and so good. I mean, we wouldn't want to get rid of the tree planting of part of Tree Sisters. But the actual conversation, these hard, messy, difficult conversations, to me, that's the sort of the heart of it. And then the, the generosity flows out from that. But that's just how I how I experience it. I don't know how you experience it. Beautiful. Yeah. 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 Beautiful. Mm. And this is the alchemy as well, right? That we are practicing inside of ourselves, but through our businesses and through organizations like Two Sisters. You know, even if we have to go where the big dinosaurs are. <laughs> yes. Uh, in the darkness and the manipulation and the oppression in the world, but we bring the light. So you know. The dark can be seen and optimized. So, otherwise, how? <laughs> yes, it's all. Well, I'm energy. really, I'm really interested in what's happening with Tree Sisters yeah. right now with this with this questions around Unilever, and I I hope that you all are can share with us some. I mean, I, I know it's internal, but I think it's important for all of us to be grappling with these questions and not to get too binary exactly. in our conversations. Exactly. So I, I trust your discretion that you'll share, but I hope it's not, it's not too closed because I think there's a, a big learning opportunity here for all of us mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in uh, mm -hmm. seeing how, how you all navigate these growth mm -hmm. issues. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. 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 So. Annie, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. And your thank you. And the beauty you bring to Three Sisters, but also to the world. Thank you so much, Samuel. You're a wonderful interviewer. You listen <laughs> so well. <laughs> Let's talk more about your business. Okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you All so right. much, beautiful. And thank yes. you, everyone, to, for yeah. your patience in the beginning. <laughs> And yes. For being with us live. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was a challenge. That was a challenge. The courage mm. it took. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Right. Much Mwah. love. Much love to you. And Thank see you. you very soon. Okay. Thanks. Thanks.